What is going on everybody, my name is Robert Watkin and welcome back to another tutorial. So in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you the best render settings for Vegas Pro 17 if you're wanting to upload your content to YouTube. Now it doesn't necessarily have to be for YouTube but these will just be the best settings for YouTube. Now what you're going to want to do first of all is have Vegas Pro 17 open. There is a couple areas you could go to get the render settings. You can either click on the little cog up here and that'll bring up the project settings or simply when you click file and new it's going to bring up the project settings here okay so getting straight into the settings you can see here that the default width and height for me are currently 1920 by 1080 if they aren't set to that just simply set it by typing in 1920 by 1080 this is going to be full HD for your videos which is a pretty standard on YouTube the next settings we're going to look at are the field order you're going to select this to non-progressive scan. You're going to select your pixel aspect ratio to one square. This is so you don't get any stretching of the pixels when it renders out. Leave your output rotation as zero original. And for your frame rate, this is going to depend on the type of content you've recorded. If you want your videos to be uploaded in 30 FPS, then select 29.97 if you want your content to be in 60 fps then select 59.94 you also have a few other options here you can see i would say double check the camera you're recording on or the screen recorder you're using and check which frame rate that recorder is using and then that'll determine your output frame rate but for this scenario we're going to select 60 fps or 59.94 now we're going to leave stereoscopic 3d mode off and then we're going to move down to the settings down here. Now a bunch of these will be greyed out and that is fine. We're just going to leave them as it is. We're going to go straight down to the settings here where you can see it starts with full resolution rendering quality. We're going to click on this and change it from good to best. This just means your render is going to be at the best quality. This will increase render time slightly but it is going to make for a much better quality video in the end. We're going to leave motion blur type as Gaussian. We're going to change our deinterlace method to blend fields. And we're going to change our resample mode to disable resample. And it is as simple as that. You've got the best render settings for 60 FPS. Like I said, if you do want 30 FPS, just go in here and change this to 29.97. Or if you want any other frame rate, you can select them as well. But we're going to keep that at 59.94. And if you go to the top box here where it says template, you can actually rename this and save it so you don't have to change it every time. So we're going to call this best render settings for YouTube 60 FPS I'm now gonna save that and because there is a chance I might need 30 FPS in the future I might as well do that now we're just gonna change this to 30 FPS and then I'm gonna type in the same thing and then we'll go with type the same thing in but just changed it to 30 FPS and we've clicked save now what we can do is simply click OK and if we do want to change the render settings at any point during editing or towards the end of a project we'll just click on the settings bar up here Click the drop down and you'll see at the bottom we have our option for the 60 FPS YouTube settings or the 30 FPS YouTube settings. Now most of my videos are rendered out in 60 FPS so I'm going to select that and then we're going to click apply and then we're going to click OK. Now if you know there is just one of those templates you're going to use every single time you create a project then you can go back into your settings and on the one that you're going to be using every time for example the 60 FPS if you go down to the bottom you'll see a little ticky box for start all new projects with these settings all you do is click the tick there click apply and that just ensures every time you open Vegas Pro it's already going to have the correct render settings for your videos like I said if you are going to be switching between different render settings then you won't need to select that and you can just come in manually and choose the one you want but I will be using the 60 FPS so I'm going to click that and then click OK now just to show you what you've got to do when it actually comes to rendering a video I'm going to import some media so I've just imported the media here from one of my previous videos and let's say we were going to render this out we're going to select all of the video on this top bar here. We're then going to go to File, Render As, and you're going to see a large list of render options on this screen. So what you're going to want to do is look for Magix AVC slash AAC MP4. Click on that, and you'll see there's a bunch of internet options here. Now the one I've actually favorited with the star is the Internet HD 1080p 59.94 fps if you click on that you can then customize the template there and this will just let you ensure that the render settings are the same as the project settings now because i have already adjusted these render settings in the past i'm going to leave them as they are but you can see i've got them matched up so it is 1080p 
we've set the frame rate here to We've set the frame rate here to 59.94 FPS. You can see there are other options, so just make sure that matches your render settings. Make sure the pixel aspect ratio is 1. And then you want to ensure that you've got variable bit rate set. Select the maximum bit rate to 40 million and the average bit rate to 20 million. The reason you want a variable bit rate is just to ensure that your video is being rendered in the most efficient way possible and you're not having too high of a bit rate in some areas and too low of a bit rate in some other areas. So just by doing the variable bit rate, it gives you a bit more efficiency when it comes to the rendering process. Next, you wanna click on audio. Make sure you've got audio included. If that isn't included, you're gonna be rendering your videos and notice that there's no sound, which isn't gonna be the best. And then the sample rate and hertz, you're gonna select, you're going to want to select 48,000 and the bit rate, you're gonna to want to select 192,000. Then click on a project. And you'll see most of the options here say use project settings so it should match your project anyway. But just to be on the safe side, you're going to click on video rendering quality and click best. This will just ensure that you're always getting the best quality render from your videos. Now you're going to want to actually rename the render settings at the top here. So I'm just going to call this best render settings for YouTube 60 FPS just like we did with the project settings. We're going to click save there and then we're going to click OK. Now when you're back on this screen, it should actually highlight it automatically. If not, it should be in the Magix AVC folder and then you're just going to scroll down until you see it here. Now if you press the little star icon next to it, this just means you have favorited the render settings. And when you click on the filters, you can then choose show favorites only. And there you go. You can see that you favorited that render setting and it means you don't have a full list of render settings to go through. And the final step is to just render out the video. So you're going to you're going to want to browse a location to render out your video here. Now I'm just going to call this example. I'm going to click save and then I'll click render. And there we go. The video is rendering. You can see it is fairly quick. Now it will depend on your computer and the hardware inside to determine how fast it will actually render the video. But no matter what, the quality of the video itself should always come out pretty high when you've got these settings enabled. But that is going to be it for this video guys, so thanks for watching, I hope you found it helpful. If you did find the video helpful at any point then consider leaving a like, if you would like to see more tutorials then just subscribe to the channel, and if there is any tutorials you would like to see in particular, then comment them down below and I'll get to work making them. But yeah, that's it for this video guys, so I'll see you next time, bye!